All right, so today I'm going to show you how to do a titration with an indicator for determining the endpoint. So get your goggles and let's go. Okay, so I have my wave KHP in my flask. I'm going to dissolve this in about 50 milliliters of water. It's not super important to be exact here. We do not need to do any titanium. I'm just going to use the line that's available on my flask. And I'm going to uh, swirl to dissolve. I'm not going to add, like, use a uh, glass rod to dissolve, because I don't want any of that KHP to get transferred out of the flask uh, accidentally. I'm just going to swirl. Occasionally, I'm going to stop swirling and look at the uh, bottom of the flask to see how much solid is left. And I can still see that there are a few particles left in there, so I'm going to keep swirling and do this until I've uh, completely dissolved all of the cage. Please rinse out my burette. Uh, I'm, I've already rinsed this with water, uh, just from my wash bottle. And so now I'm going to rinse with uh, sodium hydroxide. Our titration today, we're going to use sodium hydroxide as the treatment. So I'm going to uh, rinse with this. So I'm adding a little bit of sodium hydroxide to a clean beaker. I've got my stop pot closed on the burette. I'm just going to add a little bit of the sodium hydroxide to the uh, burette. I'm kind of twirling the burette in my hand as I add it to make sure I get all of the walls of the burette uh, washed down with sodium hydroxide. Over a waste beaker, I'm going to open the stop clock of the burette and let that sodium hydroxide drain. Once the sodium hydroxide has drained from the burette, I'm going to add a little bit more sodium hydroxide for one more rinse. So down the walls again, and then I'm going to go directly into the waste beaker. I've rinsed the tip of the burette really well at this point, so I let probably uh, 10 or 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide run through that tip. I'm just going to do this a couple times, just to be really careful about cleaning my burette. Okay. Now it's time to fill the burette. So I'm going to take it back out of the stand. Stop pump is closed. And I am going to uh, carefully add sodium hydroxide. Definitely drip down the side here. So I'm going to use my claw to wipe that up. I've added almost 50 milliliters. Uh, of sodium hydroxide to have your head. I want to make sure it's mostly full, but it doesn't have to be close to the very top. So as I'm looking now, I can feel that I have a bubble in my burette, but that's not surprising because the stop clock has been closed while I filled the burette itself. So I'm going to uh, empty a little bit of solution uh, of sodium hydroxide into a waste beaker. And then I'm going to check that there are no bubbles in the tip of that burette. And it is very likely that you'll see a, a bubble uh, at the bottom of the stop top. If that's the case, open it again, full force. Sometimes spinning the stop clock around helps loosen the bubble. If you still have a bubble and you can't get it out, the other thing you can do is take the burette over a sink, open the stop clock and give it a really hard shape. Be careful not to jam the burette into the bottom of the sink. That's a great way of breaking the burette. Okay, so this looks good. Uh, and now, got a filled burette. I'm gonna make sure that my KHP is dissolved. One last time here. Yep, looks good. Okay, so then the other thing I'm going to add uh, is phenolphthalein, a few drops of phenolphthalein. 
Uh, but a few drops, just maybe two or three. One, two, three drops should do the trick. Okay. And I've set up a stirring hot plate to do my titration on. Uh, I'm not using the heat at all, but I am going to use the stirring feature. So I'm going to uh, put my flask on the hot plate itself there. And I can even put the uh, the burette tip right down into the flask itself. Now, if you didn't want to use a stir plate, that's completely fine. Uh, in fact, uh, it is somewhat common to uh, swirl the flask with, a, with your dominant hand and use the stop top uh, with your non-dominant hand. That's a great technique as well. But we've got the hot plates, the stirring plate. I'm going to use it. And I'm making sure my beer head is centered in the middle of my flask so, so that I avoid getting any sodium hydroxide on the walls of the flask. So let's just do a check here. We've got our sodium hydroxide, we've got our dissolved KHP, and we've added some PLA indicator. Right. Now I'm going to begin my titration. Because of the way I have this set up with the uh, stirring plate, the burette is really, really high. If I were to read the burette at this point, I would get some serious parallax error. So we have stools available. Great stools. I'm going to stand on that and take my burette measurement. So it looks like we're starting at 4.58 for our titration. I'm going to write that down. And now we're ready to begin our titration. Uh, and it, we've added about a uh, half gram of uh, KHP, and we're using about 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide for our titration. So it's a great idea to estimate where the endpoint will occur before you even begin your titration. That way you can run the burette pretty fast before you get to that volume and then slow down as you get closer. So now I'm just adding uh, sodium hydroxide to my flask. I'm observing the color change of the indicator from colorless to pink. And I'm stopping occasionally to make sure that the, uh, as the solution stirs, the pink color is going away. I think I'm getting close here. I'm noticing that the pink color stays a little bit longer every time I add another aliquot of sodium hydroxide. So it's a good idea to then to start adding solution dropwise. And I'm just going to adjust the stop clock so it uh, slowly adds a drop of sodium hydroxide on its own. And the stir bar conveniently is mixing the solution very well. One other thing that I'm going to do is use my wash bottle before I get to the end point. I'm going to rinse down the walls of my flask just in case I've splashed any KHP or sodium hydroxide in, on, the, on the walls of the flask. Make sure that we have a good, accurate end point. Okay, I believe we've reached the end point. I at least am very close. I think I'm going to add a half a drop of sodium hydroxide. What we want to see is that the a faint pink color persists for about 15 seconds in the solution. If it goes away before 15 seconds, you're probably not quite at the end point. And now I've got a little bit of a bubble of sodium hydroxide on my burette tip. So I can add spray down the burette tip with some water and add half a drop of sodium hydroxide that way. One, two, three, four, that's right there. There. And this should be our end point. Yeah. So we have a faint pink color. I'm going to take a measurement of my, of my burette. 
we're at 31.43. Yeah, 43. I'm gonna write that down. I'm just gonna show you what this paint color looks like. You see that? Maybe if I put a um, piece of paper behind it or on my coat. It's very faint. This is a very faint paint color. Not very dark at all, right? That's what you're looking for for the end point. Very faint pink. If it's much more pink than this, for instance, this dark, you've definitely gone too far on your titration. I think that's it.